Well, hello everyone. My name is Lynette Stevens, and I hope that the ideas that I share with you guys will inspire you to be creative and to create a cozy home. Um, I want to come to you tonight and share an idea. Those of you that are on Pinterest have probably been seeing a lot of these. They were pretty popular last year and seem to be pretty popular again this year, and that is the cute little succulents um, in a pumpkin. Hello to my friend Mary Jane and Clarice. Thank you gals for joining me tonight. Um, hi Crystal. It's always good to see you on here, dear. Um, so the little succulent pumpkin, super cute, super popular. Um, I have an idea for how you can create and achieve that look pretty inexpensively. So this is a styrofoam pumpkin that I picked up at, you guys know my favorite place, Dollar Tree. So I got this at Dollar Tree. I bought the succulents that we're going to be using tonight also at Dollar Tree for a dollar a piece. Um, so that's going to be kind of the base of what we're doing tonight. And the very first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use um, a steak knife. If you guys have a better idea of how to cut the top of your pumpkin out, then by all means you use your idea. But I'm going to use a steak knife. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start cutting into the top of the pumpkin so that we can kind of create a little bit of a cavity that we can put our succulents in. So I'm going to get this guy cut off. Um, and I have to warn you guys, I've not done this before. It's not like I did a trial run before I went live with you all. So hopefully, um, using the steak knife is gonna work as well um, for real as I have it working in my head. So we'll see. So far, I think we're doing okay. So I'm just gonna use that. And before I take this out, I'll let you guys kind of look too. So I'm sure I'll have to do some more cutting. But just so you get an idea, that's kind of what I did, all right? I don't want it too small because we've got to kind of have a cavity for our succulents to fit in. So that's about what I did right there, okay? Hi, Robin and Shauna, Darlene, Cheryl, Terry. Thank you gals for joining me. Um, all right, so then I'm just kind of going back in and cutting kind of to the center, if you will, to do this right here. Can you guys see what's happening? I'm just cutting until I can lift, aha, success, that guy off. All right, now, um, the one thing that I wasn't banking on is this guy's hollow inside. So I think what we're gonna do is improvise, because guys, this is how, when you're crafting something, this is real life, um, I didn't expect that guy necessarily to be hollow. So here's what we're gonna do. And we're flying by the seat of our pants on this deal. We are going to um, just turn this guy upside down maybe, or let me see. Let me think here for just a second, guys. When you go live and you haven't tested something ahead of time, this is what happens. Because the big thing that I'm wanting to accomplish, I don't know if I can stick this guy down. Maybe I can wedge him down in there and still use it. Aha, this is what we're gonna do. All right, let me glue this guy down real fast because what I want to accomplish is I didn't want our succulents sitting up on top of the pumpkin. I want them to be sunk down just a little bit. So here's how we're gonna do it. I can still, by cutting that top off, I can kind of manipulate and still create a cavity for us. So you guys, I'm gonna turn this where you can see what I've done. I just put that right back in there, but it's kind of sunk down. And then I'm just gonna hot glue that so we can hold that there. And we're still gonna be able to um, accomplish what we need to. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these edges too. So guys, this is how it is when you're doing um, DIY crafting. You sometimes just kind of have to wing it as you go. So yes, Robin, flying by the seat of our pants. So there we go. Darlene, I thought about that, but it's such a cavity that if I cut my top, it's gonna just fall down in there and be lost. And it's not deep enough or thick enough um, for us to utilize it to shove our succulents into. So we're gonna wing this, guys. And I'm just going through and getting my hot glue on. And I'm gonna hold this down for just a minute, okay? because we still have achieved what I was needing, and that's we're still gonna end up having kind of a sunken area, which is what we want. So I'm just gonna hold this here for a second and let that glue dry. 
Um, and guys, I don't know if this will happen if you buy, because really, if you use a styrofoam pumpkin, you don't have to use the one from Dollar Tree. If you find one that's larger somewhere else, because this is really the only size they have there. So if you're wanting to do a larger pumpkin, you could probably find those, you know, I'm sure Walmart has them, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, those kind of places. Um, you know, you cut your top off of that, and it may not be hollow all the way through like this one is, and you may not have to do this step, but we're still going to make this work. So bear with me for just a second while we let this dry. So, um, and while we're waiting, if you guys have family and friends that you think would enjoy learning how to make these fun little succulent pumpkins, if you would take just a second and share my video, I would greatly appreciate it. And probably tomorrow, I've got to go um, draw for some more winners um, for you guys that have been sharing my videos. So I'll get that done um, hopefully tomorrow so we can make some announcements and I can give a few more things away. So I appreciate you guys and I appreciate your support. All right, guys, it's good enough. We That works just fine. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, and you don't have to do this, but this is just kind of my style, and this pumpkin's just a hair bright um, for me and what I like. And if that's the case for you, I want to share a little secret with you for how you can kind of age your pumpkin and give it just a little more character. So I'm going to put my rubber gloves on because we're getting ready to use some wood stain. And I'll turn this around so you guys can see. I'm just using the same stain that you guys always see me use, and that's Minwax wood stain, okay? I use it on all kinds of things. Hi, Vicki and Monica and my sweet friend Debbie. Thank you, girls, and uh, I appreciate y'all. Let's see, I'm trying to see if I missed anybody else. If I missed you, I'm sorry, but I do appreciate you guys tuning in on a Saturday night. So, okay, I'm gonna put my gloves on because what we're gonna do is take the wood stain, and I just got a little craft brush, okay? Because what I'm gonna do is I'm using, let me make sure I got the right can. Yes, I'm gonna use the dark walnut color, okay? And I'm going to, use my stain and I'm gonna wipe it, not getting too worried about it being perfect, guys. I'm just gonna wipe this in um, the little crevices on my pumpkin, okay? And I'm not gonna do every one because that could end up looking maybe a little overkill. So uh, I'm just gonna pick a few of these and I'm gonna wipe my wood stain to kind of create some darker veins in our pumpkin, all right? So just pick a few of them, darken those guys up some. Okay, uh, maybe one more right here. All right, so craft brush works perfect for that because you don't wanna get too much. We really want to kind of highlight the veins, okay? And then just take an old rag, and you guys have heard me tell you before, old t-shirts are perfect for this. I literally am using the sleeve off of an old t-shirt because this is a small project, and I don't need an entire t-shirt for this. So if you'll cut your t-shirts up into sections, things like the sleeve that you cut off is perfect for tackling these smaller type jobs, okay? And while I'm wiping my stain, guys, I'm being careful not to wipe it all away. I'm leaving a little bit. Can you guys see that? So I'm lightly wiping my stain away, and um, you don't want perfect lines, okay? To make it look more authentic and genuinely a vintage, um, don't create perfect lines. You see there, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that one's quite a bit wider than some of the others. You want your veins, the highlighting, you want those to be, um, you know, different and not um, perfectly, symmetrical and the exact same size because it just adds more of an authentic look to it if you do that, okay? Because if they're perfect, then they look a little too staged and a little too perfect. So we don't want that. All right, so there's our dark and I'm gonna hold it up and hope that you guys can see. Hi, Francis. Thank you for joining me tonight, dear. Okay, then I'm gonna take my wood stain in Early American, which is just a good medium color it's my favorite medium color. So if you're um, ever wondering and looking for um, a good stain, and even if you're doing wood and you're wanting to stain a wood item, um, if you don't know what color stain to put on it, Early American is a great choice for lots of different projects and lots of wood. It's just a good 
rich medium brown. It's not too light and it's not too dark. So for 30 years, this has been my go-to color, okay? So now I'm just taking my one inch brush, my stain brush that you guys always see me use that I leave wrapped up in an old t-shirt in between uses, and I'm just going to wipe it on our pumpkin, okay? And like I said, you don't have to do this step, but I like, um, you know, pr uh, products, things, decor, decor is the good word, that's the word I'm looking for, decor, um, that has a little more character and age look to it. That is my favorite style. So, and my hope is that by doing this, because like I've said, I've not done one of these before, that I know I've used, um, I use stain to age and um, distress everything. So I figure if I use it on everything, it's gotta work on styrofoam. So um, we're winging it here, guys. I've never done this before, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work because I've used it on everything else over the years and it works great. So, okay. All right, so let's set that aside now. And let's get our pumpkin wiped back down. Okay, so then just take your old, oh guys, yeah, I like this so much better. Then take your old um, rag and wipe, okay? And you don't have to wipe super hard because if you leave a little bit uh, stain heavier here and there, it's gonna truly give it that, it's been around for a while, my favorite thing, found in Grandpa's barn, it's gonna give it that look if you don't wipe super hard, okay? And then that stain will just dry at different rates and will look awesome. I think in case this guy tries to peek through in some areas, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe a little stain up here as well. Now we're gonna be covering this in a minute with Spanish moss and our succulents, but to just kind of help us camouflage some of this white styrofoam, I'm gonna go ahead and stain that, okay? Because it could end up paying off for us so we don't see that bright white, because I don't wanna see bright white on this guy. All right, so let's get our stain on. We'll just work it down into the, some of the crevices, okay? Get that guy done. All right, and then the majority of this is gonna get covered here in a minute, okay? But it doesn't hurt for us to do a little camouflaging before we start. So then I'm just getting the excess off, all right? And then I'm gonna hold this guy up and see if you guys can kind of see um, what we've done and what we've been able to achieve by wiping our stain on. I can tell you this guy doesn't look like I bought him at the Dollar Tree. I promise you. He doesn't look like I bought him at the Dollar Tree. So let me hold this up. Uh, I don't know. That light's kind of bright. I'll take a good picture tomorrow. I'll take it outside and take a picture for you guys. But he definitely doesn't look like we bought him at Dollar Tree. I can tell you that. So I love the way that turned out. So there's a simple way, and guys, I don't care if it's a styrofoam um, pumpkin that you're turning into a little succulent pumpkin like we're getting ready to do, or it could even be a ceramic pumpkin that you've purchased and you just think, wow, it's just a little too bright for your taste or your decor. Wipe wood stain on it and then wipe the excess stain back off. And don't forget to do that step because if you put the stain on and don't wipe it off, it'll be kind of a gummy, sticky, shiny mess and you're not gonna be happy about that. So, Robin, thank you for sharing and thank you for the sweet compliment. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so now let's get started. And I'm actually gonna start by putting just Spanish moss on. You guys can pick this up at Dollar Tree also on the little floral aisle where they have their fake flowers and stuff. You can pick Spanish moss up there for a dollar. And that's where I got this bag. So um, make sure if you're wanting to, to copy exactly what I'm doing tonight, when you go and get your pumpkin there, go ahead and grab this bag of Spanish moss for a dollar because you can't beat the price. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to put some on. I'm not gonna get carried away with our Spanish moss just yet. Um, I just wanna put enough on to kind of camouflage, and then we will go back in a little bit and fill in around our succulents with more, but I don't wanna get so much on that it's so thick that it makes it hard for us to push our succulents down into our star foam on our pumpkin, okay? So let's get that on now. Okay, just kind of push that down. Be careful when you do this step because of your 
um, hot glue. You don't want to stick your finger in that. Trust me, that doesn't feel good. I've done that a few times over the years. Okay, so we've got that guy done. And then here's the three. They had several different succulents, so you guys don't have to pick the three that I picked. But I thought um, I wanted this guy just because he was a different shape. And then I thought this one that had the orange and gold on it would be real pretty for fall. So, and then this green guy, of course, I, he's just beautiful. And then he's kind of tipped in a fall color too because he's got a little bit of a um, burgundy, um, deep, deep violet look to him. So I thought he was another good choice for fall. But you guys can pick whichever ones you want. Um, so these are just the three that I picked. So now I'm going to, you know, I had planned on pushing this guy down in there. I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut this bottom off since that guy was hollow. I'm just gonna cut all of these off and we'll just hot glue them from the underneath side instead of sticking them down in. So we're gonna improvise and kind of fly by the seat of our pants, guys. And after all, that's how I do things a lot of the times. So nothing new here. All right. Before I put the hot glue on, I'm gonna set these guys down, all right, and just kind of take a look at them and make sure that I'm happy with the placement and that they're kind of where I want them because the last thing I want to do, um, the last thing I want to do is put hot glue on these guys and have them stuck down and then try to pick that mess up and move it because that is not gonna be any fun. So I'm gonna just look and make sure that I'm happy, and I think I like that. So I think we're gonna leave them right there, and then I'm just going to glue each one down right where we've got it, okay? Um, get these glued down, and then I've got one other thing that I picked up at Walmart, actually picked up for another project that I thought would go well with our succulents, um, and we're gonna look at that and see if we wanna add the other thing I've got to, okay? So let's go ahead and get all three of these guys secured, all right? And you guys, I should have told you, um, when I had this, the taller pointy guy over here, he was down in kind of the more sunk in place and he didn't stand up as tall as what I really wanted him because I wanted him to be at a different level from the, the smaller succulents. So if you noticed, you saw me move him and I should have told you right when I did it and I went thinking. I moved him back to kind of our higher point so that he sticks up some because I don't want him kind of lost and down here being the exact same size as these guys, all right? So we'll get him in. And then the other thing that I have is I bought this little um, greenery bush. I don't even know what the, oh, it's eucalyptus. I should have known that. Um, I picked this up at Walmart. They're $2 on the floral aisle. And guys, um, they're really nice. They don't look like I paid $2 for them. So I picked these up for a different project, but I thought it might actually look good kind of hanging down, you know, out of our succulent planter here. So what I'm gonna do, instead of cutting off, um, pieces, what I did is I'm just pulling each little piece off, okay? So literally, I'm pulling it right off of the stem instead of cutting anything. Super easy, and I think it's gonna work great um, for what we're wanting and kind of look. And here's the other thing I like about this, $2, guys. The other thing I like about it is it's kind of bendable. So I can make it where it looks good and kind of hangs down the side of our pumpkin instead of being so stiff that it's just out straight and sticking out kind of weird. Um, this thing is really flexible and I love that about this. Um, for $2, you can't beat it. So let's go ahead and stick this guy in. I'm gonna show you something else. Before I put the glue on him, I'm going to hold it up here and see which way it kind of naturally wants to bend so that I'll know exactly where to put my hot glue uh, because I want to let it lay the way that it naturally wants to instead of me trying to fight against it, okay? So it naturally wants to go that way. I'm gonna put my glue on the underneath side and then stick that in, okay? So I'm just gonna stick that guy right in there. And then here, when I think we're done adding our plants, we'll look again and see if we need to go back and plug any holes with more Spanish moss to really complete it and kind of finish it up, okay? So, let's hold that guy down just a second here to give our glue time to kind of dry so that he looks nice. 
and I'm just going to pick two or three spots um, on our pumpkin and add, whoops, I'm doing the wrong end, um, just add this eucalyptus in because it's kind of the style that it is and the thickness, it's a little bit kind of a succulent look to it as well. So I think it's a good complement and just gives us a little more um, filler, if you will, or should I say spiller since it's going over the side. Maybe it's a spiller um, going down the side, so I think it makes it look um, even nicer. So let's do that. Okay, put that guy down. Let me see here. Try to make sure he is headed kind of down the side of our pumpkin too, because we don't want him sticking out. So, Connie, thank you, and Carol, thank you girls for joining me. Jeanette, you're gonna be thrilled, because here I am with this pumpkin. <laughs> but anyway, um, it is fall, so, you know, too many pumpkins on fall, uh, during the fall time, I don't think so. So, more, more pumpkins there, dear. All right, guys, I think we're just gonna end up doing three of these guys. So I'm gonna put the other guy kind of around here on this back side, and then we're gonna to look to see if it needs um, any more Spanish moss. Okay, so let me get this guy put on. Let the glue kind of grab for just a minute, okay? And then we can look, this guy right here, do you guys see how he's sticking out? I don't like that. So I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna put just a drop of glue underneath one of his leaves so that I can literally glue him to the side of our pumpkin to kind of force him to lay beside the pumpkin, you know, kind of form to it so he's not going all crazy on us. And if you guys, if you like that look, you don't have to do that. But that was kind of bugging me. So let's just force him down by gluing that, all right? And I'm gonna have to give it just a second since it's hot glue, let it dry for a second. There, now he's down. Okay, now I'm much happier with that. That looks better. And I think this guy is gonna need just a hair more glue on him. So let's get that put on real fast. And put some more glue in the glue gun. Hang on, guys. All right, there we go. All right, so we're gonna put a little more glue for him, okay? And we'll look at it and see if it needs more Spanish moss. And maybe just a little bit on this outside. So I'm just gonna take a few little areas where it might kind of give a little, add a little something to it. And I'll put just a little more Spanish moss in a couple of places, okay? And it just kind of makes it look fuller, kind of dress it up a little more. So we'll stick a little bit right there. Okay, and some more right here. And guys, I don't know if you can see if I got the bag back too far, but I'm just grabbing out, just cutting off little small amounts, okay? So let's get that cut, and then we'll get that put on. And I do like that look better. I think it kind of adds a little more. It just makes it a little fuller on the top and I think it looks better, so. That glue keeps grabbing a hold of my nails. Let's get some of this out of here because it's getting in my way. All right. You guys see how easy this is? This is not hard. And you can recreate your little succulent pumpkins. And like I said, you don't have to use this size. You can get larger star foam pumpkins and do this exact same thing with those. Okay, you do not have to use the smaller size. I just wanted to use the Dollar Tree one to show you guys that you don't have to spend a lot of money to make some super cute decor because I guarantee you, when we get done with this, it's not gonna look like we bought it at our pumpkin and our succulents at Dollar Tree. So, let's see here. That guy right there is going to have to have some glue on the back side of him, I think. Let's do that real fast. Um, do you guys get tired of me saying um, this is not going to look like we bought it at Dollar Tree? Because I feel like I say it every time. Rachel, I knew you were going to love this. I started to message you earlier and tell you that you don't want to miss this. So, who knows? This guy might end up at your house, Rach, because I knew you were going to love it. Because um, you and your love for succulents. So, 
and it's so easy guys easy 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 and you can recreate all those looks of the ones that are on Pinterest that you guys love that everybody's loving right now they're super popular I see them in my Pinterest feed daily so I kept seeing them and seeing them and I'm like obviously this is a thing again this year so obviously I need to try to figure out how I could show you guys to make one especially a budget-friendly one who doesn't love that so I think we're achieving it I do think so all right guys so let's look again um, I'm pretty happy with that maybe a little bit more I lied I see one spot that looks a little bit bare so let's stick a little more of our Spanish moss right here under this orange succulent and let me turn it okay let me get him turned here for us stick that in okay now I think I'm gonna be happy with him but you guys do the same thing anytime you're um, tackling the projects that I share with you guys don't get frustrated don't get upset with yourself don't think well that's not how it looked when Lynette did it did you see how many times tonight I had to improvise or start over or change my mind or decide we got to go a different route I mean right off the bat we're cutting the top off so um, I can't stress to you guys enough don't get down on yourself and listen if you make one and you're like I don't like it it didn't turn out okay so you've got five dollars in it for everything set it aside give it to your sweet grandma because she would love it because you made it and go to Dollar Tree and buy the stuff and do it again I mean you know um, I've been crafting for years and I still will try something going and go, ah, it didn't work too good you know don't get discouraged and um, I promise you you guys can make these they're super super easy so there you go what do you guys think I'm gonna turn it where you can see the top I mean really does it look like we paid five dollars for this I don't think so so super duper cute and tomorrow when I can take it outdoors um, and take a picture or even here in my house without the bright light on it I think you guys will love it even more thank you Rach um, I think you guys will love it even more because you can see the aged appearance of our pumpkin it's not all bright orange like it was when I brought it home from Dollar Tree so you guys have got to remember and um, when you're wanting a cheaper easy way um, to add um, character and, and instant age to things I guess I should leave this over here so y'all could still see it um, always 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 remember to use wood stain it's not just for wood you can use it on other things you could also if you wanted to or needed to um, if you've got wax like the brown antiquing wax that's so popular with the chalk paints if you had that you can use wax and do the same thing I did with the wood stain that would work too um, if you don't have either of those things but you've got maybe a brown or a tan um, the little bottles of craft paint water that down like a 50 50 50 percent water 50 percent paint and do the same thing you saw me do just brush it on and wipe it back off with an old rag and you could use watered down paint to age your pumpkin if you don't have wood stain or don't want to buy wood stain there's just several different ways you can go about doing it but I hope that this encourages you gals and um, shows you that you can make super duper cute decor um, for a little of nothing the other thing I want to make sure and tell you guys tonight if orange is not your thing and I know for a lot of you um, you private message me and tell me that you really like the neutrals and you like it want to share ideas for neutral fall decor well here's an idea and um, instead of just staining your pumpkin like I just did before you do that step paint your pumpkin white paint your pumpkin gray um, you know let let the paint dry good and then go back and do your stain exactly how you saw me do do that same thing over your white or gray now you got yourself a cute little neutral colored pumpkin that you still only have five dollars in so there's you an idea um, another thing I've been seeing um, on Pinterest that I even think is super cute are the navy blue have you guys been seeing the navy blue pumpkins they are so cute so if that's your thing or you want to sneak one in what better way to sneak in a navy pumpkin into your decor this fall than to take a one dollar pumpkin from the dollar tree paint it navy you know let it dry go through the whole you know and do the same thing you saw me do tonight um you could use gold uh at 
Hobby Lobby, and I'm pretty sure at Walmart, I'm positive at Walmart too, on the aisle where they have the little craft paints, they've got the metallic colors. So you can get a silver, you could get um, a gold or a bronze or a copper paint and paint your pumpkin that and then do the same thing on top to make it completely different and not be a traditional look. So even though a lot of times, I know I have a tendency to share traditional with you guys because that's my heart, I wanna make sure that I'm serving you guys well and giving all of you ideas, even though your decor style may not be exactly like mine with the traditional fall colors, you can still take the projects that I share with you and customize it to fit your perfect decor style. So paint your pumpkin first, then do the, the stain and age, or maybe you don't want to. Maybe you want him stark white or you know the silver, the copper, or the gold without any kind of antiquing, then do that. And um, they've got, I just thought about this guys, they've got mercury glass spray paint. You could get the mercury glass sp um, spray paint and paint your pumpkin. How cute would that be? And then do your succulents on top. That would be super cute as well. So there's another idea for you. Um, the one more thing I did wanna make sure I mentioned tonight, I can't believe I remembered, because usually when I have these ideas to share with you, I forget one or two during the live. If the succulents are, especially this guy, if that's a little brighter than what your taste, and maybe even the center of this guy, you can take your stain brush, okay, um, and have the majority of the stain off of it. So don't dip it in the stain, but if you've stained your pumpkin, just what's left on the brush, you can dab that onto your um, succulent. And I would do that before I put it actually on the pumpkin, it'd just be a lot easier. But you can dab that on and then take your old rag and wipe that excess back off. And guess what? Now your succulent's toned down. It's not bright. So if the brightness bugs you, there's an easy fix. Just wipe, wipe a little bit of stain, dab a little stain on it, wipe the excess off, and now you've got yourself a um, muted, color of succulent if that's more your style so anyway um all right yes betty honey go back and watch from the beginning um charlie do you love the neutral colored and the navy blue ideas because girl you're one of the ones i was thinking of when i wanted to make sure i shared that tonight you're the first person that came to my mind so hopefully um that's inspired you and given you some ideas and charlie honestly and um, for what you have going on right now in your home and the navy blue would be super pretty, a silver or a gold, I don't know which way you lean there, but you could do a metallic one, and then maybe, you know, a white or a creamy white, and you could do a little setting, you know, make like three of these with them being all different colors, and then display them in a cute basket, you know, and they could be turned on their sides in the basket. You could put them on um, the wood trays or the cute little wood bowls or a galvanized tray. Well, probably not galvanized for you since you're going that different look, but you see where I'm going with that. A ceramic, cute platter, um, a real pretty plate. You could do two or three different um, colors of pumpkin that would match with your new decor style that you're trying to work into your new home. So hopefully um, that will um, work for you guys. Um, Suzette? You're saying spray paint will eat this pumpkin. Have you tried that? I've used spray paint on styrofoam before and had great luck with it, but are you saying you've tried it on this Dollar Tree pumpkin and it doesn't work? Maybe. So we might need to test that. But I have, I've used spray paint for years on um, styrofoam things and have had really good luck with that. So maybe Suzette's saying on this pumpkin, it doesn't work that well. Um, do you guys have any questions? Uh, anything that I can answer for you before I get off. And if you think of something after, same thing I always tell you, put it in the comments and I'll come back and answer it later. And if you're catching me on the replay, but you've got a question about something, stick that down in the comments and I'll get you. Okay, Suzette says, yes, it pits the pumpkin. But you know what? If you use the mercury glass and it pitted the pumpkin in places, would it not look kind of like like vintage mercury glass look sometimes where it's got the little pit. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a mercury glass person. I don't use that in my home, but I'm just thinking that might not be a bad idea, a bad thing if it did, but that's just my taste because I prefer the rustic look over a pristine look. So um, I might be the only one that thinks pitted mercury glass would look good. You girls may not think so. So anyway, all right. Well, if you guys don't have any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and hop off. 
Um, and I'm gonna take a break tomorrow. So I won't be back on tomorrow, um, but if I get a chance, I'll come back on um, Monday and share another idea with you guys. Vicki, um, look what I made. So listen, it doesn't look as good as yours, girlfriend. So my friend Vicki, you guys, lives here in my hometown of Jones, and Vicki is the go-to gal um, for succulents and all things succulents. She does an amazing job with her succulent pumpkins. Seriously, masterpiece. They look like a masterpiece, a work of art, literally a work of art. She is so very talented and her pumpkins are gorgeous. So Vicki, if you laugh at my pumpkin, which I give you permission to because it doesn't look like your pumpkins, um, your real pumpkins with your real succulents, but um, if you laugh about it, I'll understand because it just doesn't look like your masterpiece by any means. Your work is amazing. So anyway, I appreciate you guys and um, Debbie, thank you. Thank you, Cindy. I appreciate it. Vicki, does it really do, I mean, do I get like maybe a C or C plus? I mean, it's not yours, but maybe. Anyway, I appreciate you guys so much. Take a break tomorrow, but I'll, hopefully we'll be back with you guys on Monday. So I hope that you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Hope that you get to spend some time with your friends and family and do some fun things and get a little resting in there too. That's what I'm going to try to do tomorrow. So anyway, thank you guys for being so good to me and I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.